As you can tell, I'm not doing much wandering right now. I'm sitting in my room. Uh, the reason I'm doing that is because we have a full moon right now. I'm not really that interested in going out into my dark sky site because there's really no point when the full moon is up. I wanted to go over the various kinds of equipment I've had in the past to hopefully help you understand the differences between each and the different kinds of results you can expect. Each kind of rig will give you vastly different results. Things like light pollution levels, just the transparency or the seeing in your sky can affect things majorly. All sorts of things will cause differences in the results that you get compared to someone else that you know. You can determine your local light pollution levels by looking at one of these maps or by getting something like an SQM reader. This is the first photo I ever took as an astrophotographer. As you can see, it really wasn't that great, but I was hooked. When I first started astrophotography, all I had was a Canon T3i and a tripod. I didn't even have a remote shutter cable. These are the kinds of images that I would take back then. As you can tell, they're really not that great. There's a few upgrades that you can make to essentially boost your early ability. My first upgrade as an astrophotographer was getting the Ioptron Sky Tracker, and that allowed me to take exposures that were much longer than just the usual 10 to 15, maybe even 20 seconds that I used to do. There is really nothing better than going from just having your camera on a tripod to actually being able to track the stars and not have to limit yourself to only 15 to 20 second exposures. This opens up an entirely new realm of astrophotography that was previously inaccessible. And that allowed me to take pictures like these. The second upgrade I ever made was buying a CG5 from Celestron. They don't make this mount anymore, it's basically the AVX now, but this one allowed me to punch in the locations of various objects and basically be able to locate them in the sky automatically. No longer did I have to guess or just try and point to places. After getting the CG5, I was able to mount my original telescope that I had as a child onto the CG5 and track to basically anywhere I wanted to go in the sky. And that was just absolutely amazing, and I loved it. We won't talk about this one. Back then, I lived at home with my parents. I was about 16 when I started doing astrophotography. With my old telescope on my new mount, it didn't really last that long. I quickly learned that a singlet does not do a great job of ensuring that all the colors are focused at the same point. That's also called chromatic aberration. Effectively, it doesn't allow you to focus the red parts of an object with the blue parts. One of them will be out of focus no matter what. So naturally, I got another telescope, the AT6 inch, the Newtonian reflector from Astrotech. After a short while using my reflector, I started to realize that the CG5 just wasn't up to the task in terms of guiding performance. I ended up upgrading to an Orion Sirius, which gave me much better guiding performance than what I previously was used to, and I was able to start taking pictures like these.
after a while of using the reflector, I started to get annoyed with the little things like collimation. I'm sorry, but collimation sucks. I don't care what you say. I don't care how good your laser is. It's either that or I just sucked at it because it never really worked right for me. In an effort to return to what I kind of knew, because I was still very new to this at the time, I was looking for a new refractor. And I ended up getting the ED80T carbon fiber from Orion. The ED80T was possibly one of the best purchases I made at the time. It was all in a short span, relatively, but I ended up using that telescope for a couple years. I even took it out to college with me. A huge part of improving your astrophotos doesn't involve the equipment that you use or your dedication or any of that kind of stuff. It just has to do with your skies. I ended up taking the ED80T with me all the way out to Colorado to go to college, which was just awesome because there were so many dark sky sites just within an hour or so drive of me. And that's when I really started to see some major improvement in my astro photos. After using this equipment for, I'd say, the entirety of my freshman and sophomore years, I ended up getting tired of the shorter focal length that it had and the fact that a lot of the objects that I wanted to image required a much longer focal length, and I ended up going out and getting an MN190. Of course, this meant that I had to start collimating again, which really wasn't great because I had to drive out into the boonies on these bumpy, really bumpy dirt roads and the collimation would just not hold, no matter what. It was, it was always very slight, but it was just enough to be just that little annoyance that happens every single time you go out. And, you know, of course you know that I have to go out into the middle of nowhere because I don't have any place around here to take pictures. And I don't really want to take pictures here if I have to drive anyway. And because the fact that all these dark sites are so close to me. You know, I figure what is the difference between driving for 20 minutes and unpacking and setting up and driving for an hour or so and being in a really dark sky site and you know, going through the same process. I ended up only taking one real image with the MN190, which was pretty disappointing, but it's a good thing that Astro Gear has a really high resale value and I actually only ended up losing about a hundred bucks. After deciding that I wanted to get rid of my MN190 and upgrade to something else, I ended up taking all of my gear and selling it all online. And I don't have any of that gear anymore. Selling all my equipment gave me the funds I needed to pursue another type of rig. And I really enjoyed doing this. I effectively just cut out all the stuff I had and started from scratch with a pool of money that I was basically just dedicating to Astro. And that gave me the funding I needed to build my current setup.
The photos I take now, I still nitpick and find problems with. But they would have blown the mind of 16-year-old me.